Welcome back to another Strong Fit podcast episode, guys. We don't uh, know the number. We don't what? We don't know the number. I, I the cannot number. remember. I don't keep track. Are we 155? Well, 155 ish. 155 ish. Yeah. But we're going at it strong. Uh, today we're going to talk about some the brain waves, the brain, the states. The states, and, basically. And kind of yeah. what, how the brain kind of starts to create. Right, because we talk help. about like the flow, fight, fight, and everything, but technically it's, that's a peripheral nervous system. Right. The central nervous system, which is the brain and the spine, actually has its own states as well. Okay. That, that relate obviously oh, to the peripheral one work, because yeah. it's all the same. We just right. decompose. I had a, a call yesterday and a guy was trying to, he's like, I know it's complicated, but like he, he's wanting an absolute answer, like a, like a causation answer. And I'm like, dude, that you gotta exist. think of the body. It's like a universe. Yeah. But it you're is. playing 3D chess yep. in 28 or 30 different 4D, dimensions. 4D, probably. You know yeah, I mean? exactly. It's, it's, yeah, it's an entire multiverse with parallel universes. It's a quantum, <laughs> it's a quantum computer <laughs> yeah, that does calculation uh, every, nonstop yeah. every milliseconds. Because he was talking to me about the SOAS. I'm like, yeah, but it's, it's a feedback loop. Like the, fixing the SOAS yes. isn't an absolute answer. Like maybe right. there's something else going on. And, you know, you're, at the end, you're dealing with that person because that person has its own... Different universe. universe yeah, and it's a good way to and, explain it. And so that I was like, you know, imagine that you're playing in this dimension and you move the pawn. But that means that over here, the queen is doing this. And on this one, you're mm. castling the king. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, you lost me. I was like, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But this is why I think the whole debate with AI, in, to me, is overblown. Like, we're all going to die. Uh, Terminator, you know, Elon Musk, right. uh, Terminator is coming. I think, it, personally, I believe it's overblown because a single cell can do calculations no computer is even remotely close to. Yeah. A single cell, an amoeba, is smarter, if you look, than any computer out right now. But could the computer outsmart or learn faster than that amoeba to become smarter than it? To do that, it would have to be a, at least a quantum computer. The, the okay. computer we have now are not capable of that. So if we get to a quantum computer plus, 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 Maybe, right. but right now, like, you know, the whole stuff about chess, like computers can beat men at chess. Yeah, that's very true. But he cannot take up and go to P and come back and continue the game. You right. know what I mean? He's incapable also checking how temperature or stuff like that. We are still far more advanced than any of those toys. Right. For me, I think it's going to get scary when the computers can build computers, which I think we're already kind of getting towards. Right, that, but they're but so, <laughs> they're so specific, so <laughs> hyper specialist that they right. still, so, which is where we're going Technology-wise, it's just right. hyper-specialization. But we're still on top of the food chain, not because of hyper-specialization, because of capacity to adapt and deal with different right. shit. Now, this is still the number one the stuff. So, yeah, yeah, I don't think it's... I think we're making too much of this. Like, we think we're so much better now, 21st century, because we have iPhones. Are we smarter than 100 years ago? Do we have better values? Are we doing better? Yeah. Are we less religious? Right. Like, it doesn't sound like <laughs> it with today's culture. Uh, Define religion. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. Well, right now it's the walk. It, it is a it, it, is that funny that we lost religion, so we're just creating another one? Yeah. Because the walk thing is a completely religious yeah. mindset. It's crazy. Yeah. It's, it's the same shit. Like I was reading about Spinoza. The philosopher is Dutch, actually. Okay. And he was outcast from the Jewish community for, I get it, you know, 17th century. He started to say that the soul is not immortal that the law does not come from God, so yeah. that Jewish people were not <laughs> stuck with the Torah, like to follow right. the laws of God. Oh, that did not go well. Yeah. So it, it got cast out, but like excommunicated. Like the, the worst Crazy. possible sin in the Jewish yeah. uh, community, where it got pushed out completely. So, and he was so bad in Holland at the time that he had to publish anonymously most of his writings. He published only once under his own name. That's crazy. He's the, he's to this day, like that, type, you know, like 15th, 16th, yeah. 17th century, is the most, to this day, influential philosopher. That's that, crazy. Maybe not the most, but one about. of them, yeah. yeah, for questioning, you know, like, uh, it was a naturalistic, so, you know, nature over God right. type of thing. And he had to do it, not under his own name. That's crazy. But if you look That's at cancel culture, like, yeah. is it, I know it's not as bad, maybe, because those were established religion that had so much political power, they could mm -hmm. kill anybody. But that kind of sounds yeah. like where we're going anyway. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Moving forward, Moving guys. forward. 
Don't forget to subscribe. See how quickly. Yeah, that like exactly. Happening. Subscribe, click the button. Um, there you go, Spinoza and uh, the <laughs> brain brain waves. I so like let's it. get into the brain waves. That's the name of the podcast: Spinoza yeah. and brain waves. Spinoza and brain waves. Be before like we get it. there, I yeah. want to talk about that uh, Rio stuff because I'm excited about it. Yep. So I'm moving to Rio and everything. I get a big ass house. Uh, 950 square meters, something like that. But there's levels. On the third level, I can actually do an open gym. Oh, cool. Uh, like, because there's no windows, nothing. It's fully open. So what I want to do is, I'll talk about it some more, but I want to um, have like a, because uh, we have six bedrooms or whatever, so I can actually host at my house. So I want to do like a training camp, like a okay. week. Every month, I'll do a week where people can come and then we um, have a huge chalkboard that big. Uh, that I've been installed to do, thing, yeah. just do my thing for two hours. Then we can train. Then we can go on the beach and then do surf lessons. I like it. And then, uh, you know, sprints with Janine on the beach and everything. So it'll be cool. Beautiful. So that, that's in the make. That's, I'll talk about coming. it more, but that, that's, that's summertime, coming. which would be real winter time. Yeah. So I'll start nice in, uh, in uh, <laughs> September is when it starts yeah. to pick up. Perfect. Unless with December is hot. Yeah. Yeah. Can, but September will be good. Yeah. Right, right, right below the equator. Yep. Anyway. Cool. Brainwaves so, and states. Brainwaves and states. So you sent me a message. You right. seem really That's excited. Right. Yes, I am. Um, so I've been going at that one for a while. Um, the reason was uh, we talk about flow, fight, flight, and freeze, but technically yeah. those are the states of the peripheral nervous system. Turns out that the brain has its own states because the brain technically is the central nervous system, but it has its own states as well that are by us put in chunks into five different ones, right. uh, five different um, states f based on the brain waves, based okay. on uh, amplitude versus cycle per second, so hertz versus cycle per second. Um, so it goes from uh, delta to theta to alpha to beta to gamma. Okay. When it treats me, it's the beta ones. Um, so real quick, um, delta is deep sleep. I'm yeah. going to oversimplify this because otherwise we're in fucking fiber. <laughs> Delta is uh, the lowest one. It goes to, to a almost brain dead, which is 0 0.01 okay. hertz. That's uh, deep sleep. Then you go toward theta, which is when you start to wake up. Okay. You know, but you're not awake. But you're not awake, you're yeah. like in, in that in-between. That groggy moment. Right, exactly. But you know, I remember on the podcast, I said like, this is where I solve so much shit. Yeah. That's the theta stuff. So it's fascinating because I was reading something about that and they were going like, you're on the freeway and then you wake up 30 minutes later. And you're like, that's the oh, theta I stuff. Kill yeah, somebody? <laughs> exactly. yeah, you could have. Yeah. That's the theta brainwave, same thing. That's the center for inventiveness. Okay. So, you know, you work on something for months right. and you go for a walk and you go, <gasps> got is, it. Yeah. That's that. Okay. That's where that thing, because you can analyze without bias. Okay. If you look, there's no guilt there. There's right. no bias. There's no priors. So the creativity, it's like the stem of crea creativity. Of right, sorts. exactly. That's the, my room in the, my, okay. in the mind palace when everything is clear on the stuff. Yeah, that's where things spin. Okay. That's a theta brainwave. Long story short. Alpha is, is a meditation. Yeah. Calm down everything. And then you get to beta. What I like about this is uh, we always talk about looking inside versus looking outside. You know, like we define the parasympathetic was energy spent inside versus sympathetic energy spent outside. Well, toward the brain, it's the same thing. If you look delta, theta, and alpha, it's, it's looking in. Yeah. Now, when you start to become reactive, that, those are the beta brain waves. Okay. So as we move on, the brain works Starts to more fine. Get no, excited. Works more, yeah. Like the cycle per second, so it, it works f the amplitude right. of those, uh, what they call neuronal oscillations, you know, like the, basically it's like an electrical circuit. As the amplitude goes up and faster, that's when we move from the delta all the way to the gamma, right? Okay. And so the beta is when you become reactive, when you start to pay attention to the world. Gotcha. That's the beta uh, brain wave. So, there's a, that, that's what I want to focus on today because there's so much fascinating stuff there. So, for example, this is where you're reactive. It's the beta stuff. They're divided in three. Beta 1, beta 2, beta 3. Yeah. Uh, the beta brain waves are the state where you can think negatively. Okay. That's it. Like, if you look, when you're <laughs> zoning out on the freeway, right. you're completely chill. There's no negative emotions right. that happen or anything. Unless you start to have that mental fight and then and that's then when you switch you yeah. switch back whoop. to beta yeah. so what's interesting with beta is that when the top down the top top the top down decisions are made i mean that's where you build prediction okay right and so you have three types of beta beta one is the simplest one when you're mostly idle you don't really pay attention beta two is you start to 
be way more aware. Um, that's where calculation would come in, like math mathematical calculation, stuff like that. Yeah. And then beta 3 is uh, the hypervigilance, surprise, excitement, and all that stuff. Okay. So, what does it matter? Because we're going to take it as states, right? Yeah. And then we're going to link them to uh, training and anxiety to, make, to explain what I was talking about. So, if you look at beta 2, it's what? It's calculation. It's that steady cardio I was talking about for anxiety where right. you're right below freaking out that freaking out minus one, yeah. and you stay there. Why? Because it teaches you to handle stress through a very calculating matter. Literally, oh, yeah. that's when you go two plus two equals four. You pay attention, you focus on things, and then you move forward straight line. It's a very linear way of thinking. Right. If you go to beta three, that's when surprise happens. What is surprise? Surprise and fear are, from a body perspective, are kind of the same, where that fifth hierarchy that amygdala, which is the center of fear, right. brings everything to consciousness. So it's hypervigilance. Okay. So then it goes back to anxiety being a matter of awareness. So beta 3 is a greater awareness of, of, of the environment because yeah. it starts to maybe threaten you or stuff like that. Okay. So that steady cardio would be the beta 2. And that uh, freak out burn the question would be the beta, beta three. 3. Okay. Remember when we used to train? So sometimes we did one set, but then it's all out. And you know, like you use fear as a motor on this. Right. Because you're like, we're going to die. Yeah. <laughs> but then you use that as an energy. It's because we're, we're trying to get to that beta 3, which is surprise, excitement, fear, and then just go one right. time. And then you spike to the nth degree. Whereas when we are, we're doing six sets, I remember of the drags and all that yeah, shit, yeah. by the third set, you go, fuck it. Like it's just, you're there, yeah. <laughs> There's three more sets. But you remember, like we didn't do any worse. Speed-wise or whatever, no, but mentally it was, still it was far less stressing. Yeah, so that's going. That's a huge spike until you create. Right. Is it creating safety in it, or like it just goes like or acceptance? The, I think it's acceptance. Yeah. That you talk about all the time. I think that's what it is. It's like you have the first two, and by the third, you're like, oh, fuck it. <laughs> I don't need to be ultra aware in this state. Right. Yeah, it fucking hurts, but I got three more. Fuck yeah. it. I always say you stop putting it on the pedestal. It exactly. Stops become, it stops becoming this overwhelming. Exactly. Thing. And I just that. realized that it's just a sled rag, right? Or and then, whatever and it may be. What I always found fascinating is you don't do any worse. Mm -hmm. You actually relax and do it exactly Maybe. the same. But that's not the same. Uh, so that would be more toward the beta too. So after the, it's oversimplification. But imagine uh, what I want to do is just like we have the, the wheel with the state, I want to do the same type of thing for the brain. For the so brain. beta 2, even though technically it might not be beta 2 because we're not testing people, but right. the idea would be that it's like you have a state that is necessary to be aware, focused, but not, you know, like not overly, like I'm about to die kind of feeling. Right. You know, like the last two steps where like fuck it, go through, like oh. the burn the questions, which right. is still necessary yeah, for yeah. specific things. But, um, Certain things, that, that's not the proper state for certain things. For example, in fighting, you don't want to go to beta 3, because then that means you're freaking out. Right. Unless there's 10 seconds left out. and you literally have a broken leg and you still right. punch. Or, or like you know, the street like, fights, like the right. 15 second street fights. Yeah, exactly, a knife <laughs> is coming and then yeah. it's react and it has to be now. Right. right. Uh, whereas the beta 2 will be like, all right, so I'm going to do this. You know, strategy, I'm going to go there and then I'm going to go this. Yeah? Because otherwise, the reaction is so high that I think that's where we see people going toward external talk and all that right. stuff. Interesting. So then, is there a way to obviously measure? They have like probably the yeah, they do. the things, yeah. right? But are there physical components that you can look at to see kind of where you are, or would the system be listening to the heart as, right, as well and stuff like that? So yeah. Loop? So uh, for us to measure, it would have to be the EEG, that's the uh, or whatever it's called, in encephalogram. Yeah. Blah blah blah. blah. Uh, that would be the only way, but. Um, I was playing with that with kickboxing yesterday, and I can pinpoint exactly that moment, you know, when I start to get tired, right. or I lose the muscle there, or stuff like that, and I want to go to that, <gasps> that surprise feeling. You don't like that right. when you train, and you just got slapped really hard in the face yep. in a workout. Right, so you have two choices then. You either go with it, which is a slap in the face, which is a surprise, it's almost fear, and then you go, fuck it, right? right? And then you go like this and everything, which usually drives you toward um, external torque. So 
it can be good there, and then your heart rate explodes and everything. It can be necessary. But in a fight, if you want to keep a, a, a cool mind, more st strategic and everything, you can't do that. So I was doing that with kickboxing yesterday. Where every time I wanted to go there, I was like, no. Stay mm -hmm. below that. Do not go into surprise. Right. Well, I can feel it right here. Same thing. I was talking about the airline. Yeah. Where suddenly, I feel my heart pumping more, and yeah. then that surprise, which I realize now, is surprise or fear. Right. Not from a I'm fearful perspective, but from the body response. You know, like mm, there's a diff. I can feel there's a different, almost metabolic requirement right. at that moment. And so I was staying right below, going, yeah, you're dying, but you're gonna die in beta two, not in beta right. three. Yeah, because I was so I was playing with that, right? And we right. had a podcast a while ago, and we were talking about if you're stressed out, you need to accept that stress. Exactly. And so I, b I was playing around with different recovery methods, and I was using heart rate as a as a guide, which the, no, no, the as a measure, rate, not a target, yeah, as a measure, but yeah. as a measure. But yeah. so basically, if I could get myself back down to maybe like a 120, 125, mm -hmm. 130 range after doing a shit ton of work, yeah. and the heart rate maybe didn't come down to that 120, 130, mm -hmm. but after the second set, it, it was around 145 to 150, 160, mm -hmm. but mental clarity was much better. Right. And so I was, like, I, I, I was trying to figure out how to explain it, but it's basically, yeah. I'm no longer in that stressful that situation high, yep. and I've created the acceptance. Yeah. So this is almost like a reaction to stress as well. Like you always yes. talk about the baseline and reaction to stress. Exactly. This has to exactly. play a major role as that. well. Right, I think that's what this is. It's reaction to stress. Yeah. Why do you go to a 12 if you need an 8? Yeah. Because you train yourself to go in beta 3. It seems right. to be a state yeah. that you can train yourself to be. And I'm going to explain why it's necessary, but first, uh, why I think it's necessary. But first, let's go back to that. I think that's exactly that. Is that reaction to stress. Do I need a beta 2 or do I need a beta, beta 3? Beta three, yeah. right? And each has their, their own uh, necessity. But... In that case of training and everything, if you look, most of the time a beta 2 is a more interesting state. You can, it's not hyper vigilant. So by the way, it's a lot less energy spent, right. yeah. obviously, uh, mentally anyway. It's a lot less freak out. But that acceptance means you could feel almost your brain being there going, hmm. Right. Your, your yeah, level exactly. of thinking went down. What I find interesting is the beta 3 starts to go toward the top down level, so the prediction model being very high. Right. And th that's when, you know, when you're freaking out, your mind is like, quit, quit, quit. And when yeah. the mind starts talking to you, when you accept, that conversation lowers. Yeah. So, by, by the way, the default mode network is all through beta waves. Right. Episodic memory is in there and everything. So, it's huh. all through that. Episodic memory starts to get triggered as you, as as you, you start go. to go into certain states. Right. I think as a defense mechanism. Yeah. So, I mean, but I mean, this goes way beyond training because this is, way you beyond know, training. The, the ability for PTSD, right? The PTSD aspect right. it puts exactly. Things, it Maybe puts that's what they a do. Very massive heightened right. brain level. Maybe that's what they do. And so that starts. Whoop. Yep. And, <laughs> and so they have to train your self anything hyper vigilant. So they yeah. hear, um, you know, the firecracker or yeah. whatever. Whoop. Yeah. And then episodic <laughs> memory comes comes, comes in. Through, yeah. Well, I said my buddy Marshall and people would drop weights behind him. Yeah. Like not on purpose, yeah. but he'd be like <laughs> and I was like, calm right. down. <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> really? It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> right. But imagine uh, back to the reaction to stress. Mm -hmm. Imagine if what you have learned because again, hypervigilance is based on fear. Right. So if you're like Marshall in a place where a, mo a noise oh. means someone is trying to kill you, because uh, in his case it because, was true. Yeah. Um, the hypervigilance, the amygdala is the, that fifth hierarchy, not the amygdala, but the fifth hierarchy is ready to take that word into uh, hypervigilance right. because we're going to die. Right. So beta three state of the brain right away takes you to a very specific thing. <laughs> and the entire oh, yeah. excitatory system just raises with it, yeah. which you can. So the key with that is you can train yourself. To, to do that. Right. Reaction to stress. Maybe it comes out of a trauma. Maybe we come, or gradually, or, you know, like yeah, you, you mean, fucking hate your job and it gets worse every right. day. And you learn to go, at first, idle to calculation, to hypervigilance, fear levels. And then now, and now you're always there, always there, spiking continuously. Right. So what I saw that work really well was that freak out, freak out minus one I was talking about. But if you look, what that is really is, where is the start of the beta three? Right. And stay yeah. right below that. Yeah, yeah, But so you're going to push the body, but never go mentally there. there. Right. So the brain state. So it's, it's an exposure therapy towards yeah. peace, which is awesome. Because Acceptance. it still shows yep. that you still, 
I mean, I, not to go back, but you're going yeah. towards the sim. It's a sympathetic. Right. Right. Way to heal the body right. through exposure, just an right. underlying sympathetic so excitation. I remember, like a long, long time ago, I, we, I was looking at the wheel, saying, "There's a 3D missing in this." Yeah. I think that's, that's the, what this is. So I don't want to put it um, physic, uh, body versus mind, because that's too the, segregational. I don't yeah, like that works, idea. Yeah, and they because work together. then we go back to you guys saying, like, so is it the body or the mind? Yeah. They work together. But I think this, the, that's what the third dimension is, is we have the flow, uh, flight freeze, sorry, flight uh, freeze, but there's also the brain states that go in there. So in through. that case, would be learn to go to the maximum fight without going beta right. 3, or maybe right. that's what takes you to flight, is the beta 3. Right. Oh. I know. <laughs> I know. So I, that's yeah. why I was getting super excited. I was like, those are the states we can, they can to finish the, the wheel. Right. Or at least the switch, where is the switch? Maybe the switch on that fucking wheel is, is the, the brain, states of the, the states CNS of the, of the brain. Yeah, right, of those the brain. states yeah. of the, the, the brain waves. Because look what's fascinating. The, you know the machine I talk about, like ultra instinct, all that stuff, yeah. the no mind? No mind, no mind. Too many minds. No mind. Yeah. I'm not going to go the Japanese accent thing. But um, uh, last samurai. Uh, you know, mind the sword, mind the people, too many too minds. Many minds. Yeah. Yeah. No mind. That's the machine. That's actually the gamma waves. What's interesting about that is it is past beta. So you need to go through the betas before you can find true peace. Which, if you think about meditation, yeah, and if you always think about when you when you pay attention towards, you know, Buddhism and the meditation, the whole point isn't to zone out. The whole point is to bring everything in, right. allow so everything. You know to why happen. you zone out? Because you get in alpha, mm -hmm. alpha brainwave, which is looking inside. Yeah, but that is not That's the same the thing as. Um, that what makes they, so much sense with meditation. Fuck. Right. Yeah. Right. right. So, <laughs> uh, but that's why intense yeah. medita at first meditation you just calm yourself down, but that's right. not enlightenment. Right. Enlightenment is past. Past that, yeah. Well, which is all Buddhism 101, like. But it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like exactly, it makes sense. Ex totally. <laughs> They've talked about this for They talk about this for years. fucking. <laughs> and they knew it. We always go back to the same shit. They knew it. Yeah. And that's, that's the, um, the gamma brain waves that uh, suddenly goes spike and then crash, yeah. No mind. Yeah. And suddenly, because everything is in accordance, it goes way past. It's fascinating. If you look at the, diff I remember I talk about the default mode network all the time. To go from task negative to task positive, so default mode network to task positive, yeah. you need a suppression of the gamma waves in the default mode network in order to, to pass to a, to a task positive network. Right. And the better you are at suppressing the gamma here, the better you are at right. doing your task. So there's an entire Crazy. thing there that is fascinating. So I think that's why the beta three is necessary. Yeah. And and I think the gamma wave, you know what I think it is? It's the end of the parking lot after the harness for me. Right. So then the, the, the question for me is, okay, so you go through the beta waves, and then from there you, go, you jump into the gamma. Mm -hmm. So the goal would be, can you push through the beta 3 into the gamma? That's, I think that's the burner question. That's the golden nugget. The holy Burner grail. questions? <laughs> burner questions mean what? means no mind. Yeah. I think that's what I was looking for right. on the that, I think that's what I trained yeah. on that fucking... Well, and that's what I felt like. I, like that to me, like I had flashback of Australia when I was doing all the, all the phylogenetic hierarchy workouts. Yeah. Yeah. But I was getting these crazy waves. exitories and then back down. And, but look at what you like, do with your waves thing. Yeah. You hit the beta 3 until you and pass through. Going, yeah, every time. And so, but what do you need to pass through? You need to break down the walls right. that they have, the prediction walls yeah. that are built in beta 3. Right. We need to break past the prediction, the and then there is no mind. Fuck. That's so, so cool. right? <laughs> so, but can you do that with six sets? No, because then yeah. you'll go down. Yeah. So I think that's why the burner question was one set on the harness, and the as end of the parking lot is the gamma. Right. And that's what I was shooting for. And I was like, fuck it, I'll put more weight, but I have one set. Yeah. And enough weight that I would want to quit, so therefore I was fearful. And what did I do every time? I say, if I quit, I cannot look at myself in a mirror. Right. It's my identity getting broken down. Exaggerated, by the way. Yeah. I probably push that too much. <laughs> but it was so fear-based to get me to beta so 3 and go past it. Because the prediction would be like, you're going to die. And I was like, yeah, so what? Yep. And then I would go past it, and then everything would be clear. Right. I was shooting for the gamma. That's what burn the question is. Yeah, that's freaking awesome. 
But you imagine could. if you were to do that incorrectly. Right. And stop in, and beta, 3. in beta 3. Then you stress the living fuck out of right. yourself. Well, and, and what can happen, I mean, yeah, looking at addicts and, you know, they're, they're, if, you're, if you get that, it's the, the dopamine effect, yeah. that flow effect, that the surreal effect. Dopamine is beta. Okay. Right. But right. So you're, if you're looking for this out of world experience, right. and you which have is past that. Yeah. Which is past the, the dopamine. But imagine you do it incorrectly. You push, and but you, you don't go push past the prediction model right. that tells you you're going to stop and you quit. Then all you've done is built your reaction to stress to beta 3 to that fear factor right. so continuously and this is why we crashed pushers, people yeah. remember the people i couldn't sleep that's yeah. how we crashed people because they were not able, able to, to go push. past that past that state and so if all you do is to train yourself to go to that state and not past it you're going to build massive anxiety yeah because the beta wave is where you're the most reactive that's right. all there is and the what's interesting and again beta is the only state where you feel negativity right how interesting is that hmm. that's the only state of all of them. The second you go to gamma, negativity is gone, which I can attest from the old burn the questions. But not, that's not what we see. A lot of times when the people do burn the question, they finish, they go, I didn't go as hard as I could. Right. If you hear negative, that means they're still in beta. They went to beta three, where the prediction is being built, but they could not go past it. So if they go there, they are more reactive than before now. Right. Because their reaction to stress yes. has learned to spike even more. Then they'll get more anxiety out of it. That's how we crashed people. Mm. And we always wonder, uh, right. you know, we were like, yeah. but we, knew, we knew though, we said it at the time, it's like, I bet you, you they didn't, go, enough, they yeah. didn't <laughs> exactly, <laughs> but not physically, mentally, mentally. And that's the difference is we have murdered people that had weird reactions. I mean, now we reactions. can really use a buy-in. Like, are you mentally strong enough to be part of the club? Hmm. <laughs> that's what this says. <laughs> that's what this says. Yeah. So that's Basically. why we had some people weak physically. Right. But you look at them going, dude, you yeah. killed it. So we had some women, not strong right. physically, but mentally you could tell they murdered themselves. Like a Sarah when she did the stuff mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah. yeah. But then the other way is true as well. You can push that sled as hard as you want. Yeah, if you're not even capable. if you push that hard, maybe you still didn't go that, you didn't go yep. past it. You still stayed Probably. in it. Right. So then that, yep. I mean, it, that's the thing is when we're saying push that far it the the distance doesn't matter no. and the ability to continue to be able yeah, to yeah. push doesn't when i matter. said that far i did yeah. not mean distance yeah. yeah so the 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 push is is a mental push where for me i always explain it as the brain is so fucking loud yeah. that even your heart rate is, exactly you cannot hear your heart rate because the brain wants you to quit so bad the voice in your head should be so loud yeah. that you cannot hear anything else and you go past, past that, that voice and yeah. once you go past that voice that's where Obviously, it seems to be a switch to gamma, and then there is no mind. Yeah, for sure. And so that is not, a, well, I mean, there's a physical thing there. But uh, let me go into this yeah. real quick, because there's something very interesting <laughs> there, uh, because it relates to lactate again. Yeah. So what has a big effect of what is called neuronal um, oscillation, so brain waves, right? You say neurons, neuron means astrocyte. Astrocyte feed the neurons through, uh, you know, lactate, right? So there's an entire thing there. What's very interesting is once you build the lactate past a certain level in the body, in the blood, it opens the blood-brain barrier and the lactate comes in and feeds the neuron directly. Okay. It feeds the astrocyte directly that feeds the neuron. So maybe there's a moment where you build enough fuel into the body that it actually gets into the brain to, f to fuel that extra um, yeah. oscillation brainwave. Right. So do you need to build enough lactate to to build the capacity to go into the gamma wave. I don't know yet, but okay. I'm, I'm thinking that's what this means. So that means that you would have to push the sled right. hard enough to get all that fuel into your brain to go to the to next go. stage. So you have to earn, it's a level up if you want, but you still have to earn. So we need to raise the level of lactate in the brain high in enough. In the body, so in that it goes so through it goes the blood brain, brain barrier and yeah. then it's in the brain and now we can go to the next stage. But you're still gonna have to break down the prediction model to do that. Because it would be using it as a fuel. Exactly, yeah, but you need right. the fuel for the oscillations right. yeah, 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 to yeah. go faster. So I think it's an extra mm. excitatory level okay. where at some point the brown bear barrier uh, opens to let the lactate in to feed the extra excit excitatory that you need to, to go, go past, past the prediction model. Right. And now you have no mind, ultra instinct. Fucking awesome. Yeah, so. I, I, I can see that. 
right? Yeah. Exactly. It's a, it's a weird cartoon visualization in my brain right now, but I... Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, ultra instinct <laughs> all the way. I'm, that's exactly yeah. where I'm at right now. Because me, I remember that fucking harness, even by right. myself, but what I would tell myself first. Yeah. Like, and I would do it only once, because for me, that was very, very important. You should right. know you have one way, but if you don't do this, yeah. you're a failure. And then you have that bottom-up, full-blown bottom-up experience. Oh, after halfway through. Whole, yeah. So at first, it was all prediction, going like, you're a failure, yeah? And then halfway through, my feet wanted to stop, because yeah. I don't know, the 16 plates, what the fuck we were doing. Yeah. And then I was like, yeah, but no, no, don't care. Right. And mentally, like literally, like my whole brain going like, dude, stop. And I, and I couldn't wait for that voice. I wrote about this on Instagram, about that yeah. voice that tells me to quit. That's yeah, what this that's is. The whole thing, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll post it because I wrote that in, um, in Thailand, I still remember. It was in Thailand, yeah. The, the voice that tells me to quit, that. Mm -hmm. I, used to, I used to love hearing that voice and go like, bring it on. Yeah. Because the second I quieted that voice, that was the no mind coming. Right. That was a prediction model being broken. Yeah. Oh, so many things going through my head. I don't even know where right. to respond. But imagine, <laughs> I don't know, but imagine, remember it's depression. It's like philosophy meets the science, right? right? Like it's exactly. just fucking amazing. If you understand, it's, it, remember like and the depression, and like when we have people and them, they go, yeah. uh, uh. Right. So they, it's the ill beta, maybe. They can't even go to calculation. Remember depressed people, they can't, calculation can't or stuff, they can't so do they beta shit. One. Right. It's they, yeah, beta one, I don't, I, that's so their reaction to stress is they can barely go, they can't go past beta one, I think. Right. Because why their excitatory system is short. Yeah. So the glutamate together, they just stuck toward alpha, which is meditation, which is looking in, which is all depressed people. Right. And the second you're trying to make them do, eh, no, I don't, and the prediction, I don't know, yeah. and they crash right away. And yeah. how do we get them out of it? Through the fight. the fight. Always a fight. Always a fight. Yeah. Because, but we need to get them to beta three then. The beta two, right. they just, they pace everything and then they come right. Yeah, they so calculate the, the shit out of it right. to come back down which because their to the reaction to stress is down. Yes. Right. So if we learn to be lactate, maybe it can feed that, that neuronal, that, right. that brain wave that, that we need. I mean, so there is a state in it the, there, there are states in the brain that right. we can link to the states we've been always talking about. Right. That gives us that 3D model of the wheel I've been looking for for five years now. Right. Yeah. That's the 3D that's model. That's the one. Yeah. That's the. Um, well, we did it. We did f uh, body versus mind. Right. Physical versus versus, versus mind. Mental, yeah. I didn't like it then. I still don't like it now because I know what people are gonna do with <laughs> it. They're gonna, you know, f uh, take segregation it. the shit out of it and right. do like what about so as. But you can see. So again, it's a third dimension to the wheel. Right. No, but being able to understand it allows you. I mean. It's always going to be feedback loops on so many different levels, right? So it depends on the person you're working with, yeah. which is the best way to attack. Right. And so if I'm right. dealing right. with right. somebody right. that right. is very exactly. much in that beta two, constantly wanting to calculate everything, yeah. I'll talk more about the brain. Yeah. And then I'll use pushing past those voices in the head and those calculations in the training room. Right. Yeah. Right. If you have somebody that's always on that massive exitory or not even wanting yeah. to do anything, then we start with the Disney December to start yeah, to build exactly. up the beta it's waves, yeah. and then we can. And, and maybe they're not capable of producing the lactate because yeah. they, they, they got themselves to a point of freeze, really. Right. So like, all right, so we need the physical aspect as well. Like sometimes we play too far into emotional mapping and then the mind and forget that certain levels of lactate it's apparently. Not just about talking. Yeah, you need to do. Work. You need yeah, to do yeah. the shit. Like sometimes, right. like we had that with emotional mapping. This is why, like, we had conversation when I say, okay, no more. Right. Uh oh. Sorry. He's tough Sorry, to Alex. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. No, because they kind of, which don't get me wrong, so the mind is important, but again, there's three dimensions, not two. Yeah. So if you play with just the mind, you forget that there is a physical component to that. The excitatory system is rooted in the body. Right. And we need to go right. after that. But for me, what's fascinating yesterday in, with the kickboxing was to never let myself go beta three, because that's all I wanted to. The second I got tired, I wanted to go there. Right. But then, at that, for kickboxing, for me, that's a way of quitting. Then I just spike and I'm done. Right. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I fucking hate, you know, I don't like. gassed out, you don't have to go. <laughs> because, but look at what gassed out means for me. That's anxiety toward cognition. Yeah. Because then my brain shuts off. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, if I don't, freaking out about the cardio, therefore, anxiety, cognition, therefore, quit. Right. Therefore, go to beta 3 to quit. Yeah. And then I created that loop where I quit on cardio. 
because then I don't have anxiety mm -hmm. on condition because I never got to did it. But right. And so I was like, no. So right below beta two the entire time, it was a great session. I died yeah. as usual, but I was like, I'm not quitting mentally. I'll quit physically on this one, right, but, but not, not mentally. mentally, which I've always, see, that's, thing, that's what I did wrong, by not quitting physically on like burn the questions and going like, I'm going through on one set and everything. What I did is train myself to quit on the grind. Right. On the beta too, right. which is yeah, very yeah. necessary for sports. Because the harness is great, but, but you, you, don't get, you don't become a world yeah, champion yeah. of harness. Well, you can, uh, I guess, for world strongest men. But, well, which <laughs> is what this... Event, but yeah. <laughs> right, but this is what they do. If you look, is die on one event. Right. Yeah. Right, which is very attractive to me. Because uh, if you look on the cognition, I can just shut off once. But then I die on the grind. The problem is I love jiu-jitsu and kickboxing. Yeah. And that's the grind. Right. Yeah. And if you start to look at the sports psychology side of things, they're always right. trying to have you replay those events so the stress isn't right. as exactly. high for them anymore. Right. right. You right. miss so that game when you shot, yeah. you watch it a hundred times until you stop having an emotional response to it. But, yeah. What's the emotional response to, stre the, to, uh, to it, the emotional response? It's that stress response. That, right. Stop being in beta 3, surprise, fear, or whatever, and go down to calculation beta, beta 2 and two. go, okay, when I'm, what, oh. Right. My foot is the wrong. Yeah. Or I did this. Or I did that. Or I got caught. What did I got? And then right. you start to have that calculation mind about it. So it's it's that. It's lowering that response. Right. Almost now, how long can you stay in the gamma waves? This is gonna be the question. I always. <laughs> so um, <laughs> right. there is a. I can tell you from a physiological aspect, right? Yeah. When you're in a gamma wave, you start to see. Um, the release of uh, glutamate from the astrocyte because okay. you know it's a cycle the, yep. the glutamate allows the excitatory levels going and that leads to also the levels of calcium like intracellular whatever calcium that is an excitatory as well magnesium okay. is an inhibitor, In inhibitor calcium is an exi excitatory factor and so you have the you have the astrocyte really the glutamate based on the calcium levels and so okay. that i mean i'm oversimplifying but fuck off um, it's that loop that allows the excitatory, yeah, because remember to stay in gamma, you have to stay in that excitatory phase past right. the beta. The second you start to lower, you go back in beta. You go back into freaking out, which right. in training, right. you can, you know exactly you the it, part yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah, exactly. When the brain start talking about, yeah. talking again, because you rested too much, like the level of excitatory comes down, you go yeah. right back, but then you go back the other way. You go through beta three, because everything is, you can measure it. It's literally the, the amplitude and cycle per second. As it goes up, you go mm -hmm. through beta one, beta two, beta three, gamma. gamma. Okay. So as you come back this way, you're going to go through beta three, beta two, beta one. Yeah. Okay. That's why sometimes in training, you become like, you're still training, but you walk around, you're, really, you're in yeah. beta one because you can't maintain the excitation. Okay. And the brain does this all the time, by the yeah, way. Yeah. It <laughs> it's not that simple. You don't <laughs> in, stay in one. Yes, right? like exactly, just, yeah, microseconds, right? Exactly, microseconds. For sure. Like uh, just uh, me talking, the space in between words requires me to go okay. toward, uh, toward theta because it's more, because uh, I'm calculating what I'm going to say next. Right. So it's music when you play the silences. Yeah. Right, that's a different brain wave than when you make then. the sound. So that's why, which one matters more, making the sound or the silence? In right. music, it's... it's you in both, right? It's not just making the sound, it's playing the silence. In, in violin, it's, that's all there is. Huh. That's not the same brainwave. Making the sound is not the same brainwave as uh, playing the silence. Just like talking, right. the space, the space in, between in between the words is not the same brainwave as the word itself. Right. Yeah, so that's why the brain, that's why like, it's, it's for the chest continuously. Yeah. So it can't, it's it not can't be a simplistic approach to this whatsoever. Never, <laughs> ever. <laughs> but we can put it in chunks that allow us to explain it maybe more simply. Right. It'll never be easy. Yeah. But that physical need versus mental starts to get, that third dimension gets clearer if you, if you look at the brainwave. So that's why I was excited because yeah. I could tell, like we can finish the wheel. Right. So yeah. I've been looking at for a that long time That one's giving now. me a lot of yeah. cool ideas as to how to yeah. look at certain clients that I have at the moment. And I've been, that wheel, I've been looking at that wheel for, yeah. I, I told you that five years ago something was missing. I just could not yeah. figure it out. But like now I'm starting to go, oh, that's where it is. It's the, in the central yeah. nervous system. Yeah. So it's the peripheral versus the central yeah. getting together. 
and tension between both. Yeah, it still doesn't give me emotional mapping, but getting closer. We're getting there. Yeah. <laughs> I still, There's something there. There's still something there that I can't, I'm still not seeing. But right. at least the wheel, like uh, that third dimension, I'm starting to get. So I have to link a little bit the, the, the five brain waves to specific state, because where is freeze, stuff like that. Right. I have to figure that one out. I like it. I, be, I, I will try to see like uh, depression and that and brain waves. Yeah. By the way, see what the podcast is working. I just got an email of a guy who tests uh, and then I'm sure he's listening to this and then thank you for your offer and then I'll, I'll email you today and take you on it. He's testing uh, VO2 max at his clinic all the time and they have like a, that's what they do for a living. But he's al always has a questionnaire about stress okay. as well. And he, he said he would send me all the data. Oh, cool. I was like, oh, cool. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh, I was like gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna see why I want to start that group in September. We yeah. can start to build something yeah. concrete. Right. And that's what I like about the idea of all this is all this can be applied concretely toward anxiety. So no more of that bullshit system that they're selling right now where nothing is concrete enough right. that you can well, catch them into it doesn't work. Right. Yeah, because most of the stuff that they're doing is just if you breathe breathing protocols, that's basically what they're doing to heal anxiety. Right, and it's not but, even the need but to none feel of this, anxiety. But none of this is like an oracle, like yeah. a, you know, where you can never catch them in a lie. Right. Because they never really said it. Right. Or They're good politicians. Exactly. <laughs> and that's what I see when it comes to anxiety. People are not telling you what anxiety is. Right. You know that feeling that you have? No, I don't. No. Like, how come the Dutch don't have a word for it? I just started working with a 17-year-old girl who was having panic attacks. They took her to a psychiatrist, oh they put her on medication, of so then she got depressive, so they put her on more medication, and now she's anorexic because that's the only thing she can have control over. And, she's, and so she reached out, and I was like, well, let's have a, so I have a call today with her, but I'm like, Oof. that's a, like, I know it says 17 hard. years old. Like, I know it says Jesus, hard. yeah. So, it's a, a body as an object. Yeah. And that's a hard one. So it'll be an anorexia. interesting... You know that anorexia has the highest rate of death of all these mental disorders? Really? Yeah. Jesus. They're, yeah. they're in the... Yeah, no one, no one talks about it, but anorexia, the real anorexia, like, uh, kills more than any of the other ones. Right. Yeah, it's crazy. So Not bulimia, more fun. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, it's mean. But he has an object, it's a mean way. Yeah, so we see that a lot. Like that conversation about anxiety has to be, has to be done, not even right. redone, it has to be done. Yeah. Like no one is explaining what it is. Again, in, in Dutch, they don't have a word for anxiety. That gives you right. an idea exactly where we are with anxiety. We don't even know what it is. Yeah. So we actually at least have the balls to say this is what we think it is. It is yeah. So maybe we're wrong and then come at us, at least we learn from it, yeah. but at least we have the balls to say this is what we think it is. And we're going to have a concrete plan, a protocol for people to apply it with their clients. Right. And all right, we're wrong, then you'll have something to, to bite on. Yeah. But we're going to do this. Yeah, exactly. At least we're going to try to help. For sure. Versus that passive almost like philosophical f Facebook <laughs> bullshit that they put to deal with anxiety out there, which is yeah. not, it's helping for three weeks, bullshit. Yeah. Anyway. Well, it's trying to get the rise out of a motivational quote. Like it's if you need a motivational quote every single yeah. time to go train. They, they, they talk about the uh, always like the ANS and then the CNS and everything. It's like, you guys don't using words. Like, what does that even mean? Right. <laughs> like, uh, like you're stating something, you're just putting a, a nice word on it, but you're stating something that is obvious. I'm like, yes, and then what? Yeah. Okay, so you stated the problem. Right, you're not offering a solution by stating a problem. <laughs> There's a difference there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Stating a problem is not the same as offering a solution. Right. Stating a problem is step one. Adult learning tells you that stating a problem is what hooks people. Right. That's called uh, problem-based uh, learning. It's uh, the best way, to, because of the way the brain works, the arousal versus focus, the, right. the best way for uh, adult learning is state a problem and then move from there to the solution. Right. What they're doing is stating a problem because then they get a hook in people. Because it's true to, with adults, that's the one only hook that works is to first state a problem. problem. That is not the same as offering a solution. Yeah. But that's all they do, really, is they state a problem. So they state a problem with fancy words. Right. You're still are offering a solution. I was watching um, this, like, sales, how to get sales, right? And yeah. they were doing, a, they're like, you know, we're stating the problem. 
life mm -hmm. is shitty. Yep. So we offer the solution, which is this picturesque view of, you know, the, 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 the result and yeah, the resort and shitty. all this. Yeah. yeah, and they're like, but we don't tell you that it's going to take you 72 hours to get there because we're going the, the package we're selling you is just absolute shit all the way through. Yes, exactly. But you're like, yeah, my life is shitty. I do need a vacation. Right, <laughs> because what they're saying is over there, life is not shitty, which yeah. is not true. Right. Because you still have to come back and you mm. still have to pay for it. And so, yeah. yeah. So they, they've all, and that's neuroscientists will have to own up to that shit as well, which they never do, is they saw how adults learn. They saw that stating a problem is the hook. Then from there, you're supposed to look at the end and then state the thing. And then yeah, but usually so there's seven steps. Right. All yeah. they do is the they first one the now. Problem. It's state the problem because they know it's a hook that right. adults need to pay attention to something. Right. Yeah, they state the problem and they give the symptoms of the problem. Right. That's and that's it. <laughs> Those are the two steps. Yeah. The first two steps of look it up. It's called problem-based uh, learning, PBL. And it's by far the most eff ex effective way of learning, except the seven fucking steps. Right. Not two. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they're just following the steps. And then you have them. And then you're like, see? And I'm like, see what? You have not offered a solution. Right. Your life is shitty, you're anxious. Going on vacation is great. That is not a solution. No. You're going right back to your life to the exact <laughs> the day, same problems. The day you come right. back, yeah. Exactly. And except now you spend more money. Right. That yeah. is not a solution. That is an escape. That is not the same. Right. So all they're doing is stating stuff, which I'm like, all right, so us, we're going to do more. We're going to offer a solution. Yeah. Right or wrong, that's I where like we it. are. And I'm pretty sure we're right. So far, it's working. Yeah, I like it. So we'll, we'll end it there. Yep. That was a good ending. Have a good one, so, guys. See you guys. See you soon. My head is, is rattled. <laughs>